Okay, so let's look at an example with a uh, finite set. Let the set A contain the elements A, B, and C. Then the power set of A is the set which contains the empty set, the singleton set containing A, the singleton set containing B, the singleton set containing C, the set containing the elements A and B, the set containing the elements A and C, the set containing the elements B and C, and the entire set A. So notice that the cardinality of the set A is 3, and the cardinality of the power set of A is 2 to the third power, or 8. A set which contains as its elements other sets is called a family of sets so notice that the power set is an example of a family of sets since it does contain as its elements the subsets of a given set let the set I be a non-empty set which we call the indexing set such that for every index I in that indexing set there corresponds a set A sub I. The set of those sets, A sub I, for I in the indexing set I, is called an indexed family. of sets. Now another notation that you may see for an index family of sets is very similar to this one, it's just a variation. We show the set A sub i in braces and then as an underscore we have i and i. Both these notations mean the same thing, that we have an indexed family of sets. Okay, so now we can define an arbitrary union and intersection. So we'll start with the arbitrary union. So let the set of the sets A sub i, where i is in some indexing set, be an indexed family of sets. The arbor arbitrary union over the index i is the set, which we denote this way. And this is set of the elements x such that x is in the set a sub i for at least one specific index i in the indexing set. Once again, let a sub i, where i is in some indexing set, this, let this set be an indexed family. of sets, the arbitrary intersection
over the index i is the set, which we denote this way. And this is the set of those elements x, such that x is in the set a sub i for every index i in the indexing set. So notice that if the indexing set is countable, in this case countably infinite, then the arbitrary union is notated this way the union from i equals 1 to infinity of a sub i and is called a countable union Similarly, the arbitrary intersection is now denoted this way, the intersection from i equals 1 to infinity of a sub i, and is called a countable intersection. Now, if the indexing set is finite, then the union is notated as the union from i equals 1 to n of the sets a sub i and is called a finite union. And similarly, the intersection is the intersection from i equals 1 to n of the sets a sub i and is called a finite intersection. Okay, so new definition. Let A be a subset of a larger set X. The complement of the set A in the set X is the set, which we denote this way, X set minus A is the set of those elements x such that x is in the set x and x is not in the set a. So notice that the intersection of the complement of a with the set a itself is empty since we have removed all those elements that were in the set A, and so the two sets no longer have anything in common. Also, if the set X is the universal set, and by this we mean that uh, every element under consideration is in the set X, so if X is the universal set and the point x where the element x is not in the set a, then necessarily x is in the complement of the set a. Okay, so we will uh, end this lecture with a theorem. We will prove uh, what is known as the Morgan's Laws.
So let the collection a sub i, where a i is in some indexing set i, be an indexed family of sets. such that a sub i is a subset of the set x for every index i. And here uh, the set x is the universal set. Then the intersection, correction, the uh, complement of an arbitrary intersection is the arbitrary union of the complements and the complement of an arbitrary union is the arbitrary intersection of the complements. Notice that these are statements of set equality and so to prove uh, each statement we must show set inclusion in both directions. So proof First statement, let x be in the complement of the arbitrary intersection. As x in, is in the complement, x is not in the arbitrary intersection. So as x is not in the arbitrary intersection, there exists at least one index i such that x is not in the set a sub i for that particular uh, index. And so x must be in the complement of that uh, set for uh, that value. So as it is in the complement uh, for a given value of the index i, it is in any union which contains that. And so the point x is in the arbitrary union of the complements. And hence the complement of the arbitrary intersection is a subset of the arbitrary union of the complements. So conversely, let x be in the arbitrary union of the complements. Then x is in the set uh, the complement of a sub i for at least one index i. So x is not in the set a sub i for this index i. So as x is not in the set a sub i for at least one index i, it is true that uh, it is not in the intersection and thus the element must be in the complement of this intersection. And hence, the union, the arbitrary union of the complements is a subset of the complement of the arbitrary intersection. So we have demonstrated set inclusion in both directions, and therefore the two sets are equal. The complement of an arbitrary intersection is the union of the complements. Okay, so second statement. Let x be in the complement 
of the arbitrary union. Then x is not in the arbitrary union. So as x is not in the arbitrary union, x is not in the set a sub i for any value of the index i. And so, as it is not in the set a sub i for any uh, value of the index i, it must be in the complement of a sub i for every index i. That is, x is in the arbitrary intersection of the complements, as it is in each uh, complement for every index i. And hence, the complement of the arbitrary union is a subset of the arbitrary intersection of the complements. So conversely, let x be in the arbitrary intersection of the complements. Then x is in the complement of the set a sub i for every index i. And so x is not in the set a sub i for any index i. So x is not in the arbitrary union of those sets. And as it is not in the arbitrary union, it must be in the complement of that union. And hence the arbitrary intersection of the complements is a subset of the complement of the arbitrary union. And so we have demonstrated set inclusion in both directions, and so the two statements are equal. The complement of an arbitrary union is the arbitrary intersection of the complements. Okay, so we will end here for today. Next time we will define a topology and look at uh, some examples of a topology. So I hope you have enjoyed the first lecture. Thanks for watching.